All right, folks, I wanted to take you through the process of getting a SketchUp model from SketchUp into vCarve so that you can mill it on a CNC machine. Uh, vCarve recently introduced a SketchUp importer, and rather than doing something simple by just uh, importing a small toolbox or other small thing, I thought I'd show you how to do it on something incredibly complicated like an entire structure built out of wood that needs to be milled on a machine. So I have been working on a fork of the open source construction system called WikiHouse, which is uh, structures, houses, buildings that are all made out of plywood. Uh, and to start out, uh, we're starting with a shed here. So here you can see a SketchUp model of the shed. It's got uh, roofing, siding, trim. It's fully cladded out. The only thing it's missing is a door. And I'll show you really quickly how the SketchUp model works and how it's built, and then how we get it from SketchUp into vCarve. Uh, so if you click in the scene tabs on this model, you can actually peel away the layers. So we're going to jump right in and take a look at the skeleton of this model. So you can see that this thing is pretty complex. There's a lot of parts in here and a lot of things that fit together. And this is a pretty intense SketchUp model in terms of all the components and parts that are in it. So you have the skeleton in here, and then you also have the plywood that acts as a shear wall that holds this whole thing together. So one of the things that we wanted to accomplish when we were building this, we'll just go to monochrome here so you can see this a little better, is we wanted to make this model um, very easy to iterate on as we came up with design changes. So let's take one of these pieces here, for example this uh, F5 um, top beam here. Now this fits together with this joint here, we call this an S joint, and every S joint in this model needs to be exactly the same. So if you turn on hidden geometry, you can actually see that this F5 beam is made up of a bunch of different components. So if we click inside to edit it, you can see that this F5 beam is this joint here, these little connectors on the top, and this joint on the end. And I wanted to make sure that we could easily edit things like the S-Join if we did a design change to it or these connectors. And I wanted them to not only be easy to edit, but I wanted them to be the same across the model. So you could change it in one spot and that change would perpetuate across the entire model. So during the course of designing the structure, we actually did drastically change this S-Join. And normally you would have to go around and you know copy paste out each one or delete them and, and, and paste new ones in and it can be um, very, very time consuming because as you can see, there are a lot of S joints in this model. But I'll show you how this is set up here. If I click this S joint and I make an edit to it, you can see that every single S joint in the model is exactly the same. Uh, same with these little connectors. This will really tell the story here. If I edit one of these little connectors, you can see how many different ones are on the model to hold this whole thing together. And if I change one, every single one in the model will change. Now, that works great for a SketchUp model, but one of the problems is when we took this piece, or all of these pieces, and we imported them into vCarve for layout, uh, on cutting on a milling machine, vCarve used to treat each individual piece here as a separate component. So when you would lay them out on plywood for cutting, all these little pieces here would be strewn about on the plywood and not all connected as, uh, as one piece, which made it impossible to take this smartly designed SketchUp model and mill it out. Well, now things are a little better. So what I can show you here is if I go to Entity Info, on this beam, you can see it has a definition name of double underscore F5, and that is the skew of this beam here. This is called the F5 beam. And the double underscore tells vCarve to basically draw an outline around this beam and to not break it apart into little pieces. And this makes it much, much easier to import things. So if you look at every completed part, uh, you know, this one here, the F6, is made up, again, of the two separate S-joints and a couple of these connectors. It has a name of double underscore F6 as well. And all that does is just, again, tell vCarve to draw a line on the outside of it and, and basically take all of those components that make it up and stick them together. So now I'm going to show you actually how to import this model into vCarve. So... The model I'm going to import is the one we've got right here on the screen, and this model again has all of the uh, skeleton parts, all the plywood parts, 
It's got trim, it's got siding, it's got a, um, a little cat in it as well. And we're gonna show you how to take a model that is fully done and very, very easily import it into VCarve for milling. Okay, so now we are in VCarve and we're gonna start a new file. And we're gonna cut this out on four by eight sheets of plywood. So we're gonna say, our width is uh, 48 inches and our height is 96 inches. For right now, we're just gonna leave the thickness at three quarters of an inch for the demo. And so now I've got one sheet of plywood here. So I'm gonna go to File, Import, Vectors, and I'm going to go find that shed model, which is right here. So we'll say Open. Now, there are some different options in here. You can have the, uh, so what's going to happen here is, is VCar, uh, VCarve is going to open my SketchUp model and it is going to pull it apart automatically and lay it all flat on these sheets of plywood. So there's a couple ways that this can do it. So as it pulls things apart and lays them flat, you can have VCarve figure out which is the largest face and lay it flat for you automatically or in SketchUp, if you want to paint a particular material on the face you want facing up, you can do that. And I actually have done that, um, and I have a material that I've named front face so I can easily find it. But it can be any material that's in your SketchUp model. So if you wanted to paint your top face bright red or something like that just to make sure you, you had everything exactly the way you wanted it, you could do it that way. Um, you can also say... Uh, you can group imported parts, so create a group for each component in the SketchUp model. Um, that will make a group inside of VCarve, so our F6 and F5 beams, for example, you can move around just like you move them around in SketchUp. Um, this one you're going to want checked off for this particular instance. Keep components starting with a double underscore together and keep all children of components starting with a double underscore with the parent. And basically what that means is what I explained earlier. If a group of components has a name that starts with a double underscore, VCarve will treat those all as one component. And you're going to see how that works in just a minute. And replace outer boundary uh, for flat jobs only. So what this will do is, what again, what I described earlier, it'll take that F5 and F6 beam and just draw a line going around the outside of it. It won't take any of that extra ge geometry that's on the inside, like that hidden line that makes up the S-joint. Now we can uncheck some of the layers here. So I had that model uh, layered very well. So we're going to check off the corrugated, uh, uncheck the corrugated roofing because we don't want to cut that. Uh, we don't want to cut the entourage, which, which would be the cat and the um, blocks that hold up the model. And we're going to uncheck the underlayment and the pegs and wedges for now, and the trim and the siding. We All we want here are the plywood skeleton parts and the uh, plywood exterior and interior panels. So now we're gonna click OK to import. So VCarve is going to chew through that model. It's pulling it apart uh, non-destructively. And now we have every part for that shed model uh, laid out here automatically. When you first import it, it does uh, just a rough nesting to lay it out. And let's take a look and let's try to find that F5 beam here and I'll show you how it treats it. So here are those F5 beams and you can see what I was talking about here. It draws a line around the outside so it ignores those hidden lines uh, that were the separate components for those S joints as it did the same here with those connectors and it even gets the holes too. Um, and that option for groups, it also treats each one of these as a group so you can easily move it around. So now our next step here is to lay this out on um, multiple sheets of plywood so that we can get efficient use of our materials. Now, instead of actually doing this manually, moving each one of these groups, VCarve can do this for you automatically. So I will click Nest after selecting all the parts. And there's some options here. We can say our tool diameter is about a quarter of an inch. We want a certain border gap. Um, we can have VCarve rotate all of the parts by the nearest uh, one degree. You can have it mirror parts if you want. I don't want that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and run the nesting algorithm. Okay, so now that uh, VCarve has gone through and nested everything, we can see here that we have exactly 41 sheets to cut this shed. So now the next thing we need to do is set up our tool pathing. 
Um, in the past, we'd have to do this uh, by individual sheet. So selecting each sheet and running tool pathing. Now, on each sheet, we've got uh, some different things that we need to take into consideration. We've got holes to drill, and more importantly, we have to drill um, to cut out inside and outside corners accordingly. So in the case of this primary connector here, uh, this area here slides into a slot in the model, and there's also something that slides into it. Now, round cutters don't make hard corners like this, so to achieve a, a good fit for this connector sliding through its adjoining hole, the actual connector needs to go into this corner and dive into it a little bit. Uh, same way here, where you have a part that comes in uh, the other direction, the four corners of this need to have the tool dive into it as well. There's also a third consideration that you need to take into account is that in a lot of places in this model, parts slide through holes. And in the SketchUp model, things are designed with a zero clearance. So if you have a one inch by three inch slot, you would have a one inch by three inch part that slides through it. In the real world, you'd be doing a lot of hammering putting together a structure like this. So you need to uh, allow for a little bit of uh, clearance so things can slide through smoothly. Thankfully, the guys at VCarve have written an amazing plugin for VCarve that will take care of all of this stuff so that we don't have to manually go through and offset every single line and click every single corner. So I'll show you how that works. If we go to Gadget and we go to Dogbone Toolpath Creator, we're going to select, uh, so all of this geometry is on layer 0, so we're going to say layer to toolpath 0. We're going to say our tool diameter is a quarter of an inch. And we're going to say our allowance, this would be um, holes that are on the inside, are going to get a 0 0.02 um, offset to make them just a little bit larger so those parts uh, will slide through. Now, in the real world, you should test to figure out what clearance works best for your bit, machine, and materials. But for right now, to show the demo, we're going to run it with 0 0.02. Once this creates the tool paths, it's going to put them on a layer called filleted contours. And you're going to see how that works in just a moment here. So I'm going to click OK. And VCarve is actually going to each and every single sheet and running this toolpath generator. So all 41 sheets are getting scanned for inside and outside corners, holes, um, everywhere that needs a dog bone, VCarve is adding it. So here we've ended on one of the last sheets. And you can see now the, the dotted pink line is our original geometry. And the black line with the circles in the corners is our newly created filleted contours layer. And you can see here the circles represent where the tool dives into the corner. And if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see the, the tool path here. So uh, this, the tool would follow along this line, jump into the corner, follow along that line, jump into that corner, and so on. So now what we have to do is create a tool path for each individual sheet. And thankfully, the guys have also come through and um, have put a feature in that does this automatically for us as well. So what you would normally do is set up, um, there, there are three kinds of tool paths on this model. There is a path that cuts all the way through, so parts that just need to be cut out. Um, there's a text layer that lightly mills the text or the skews in each part. And there's a drilling layer, so some of these panels have holes drilled in them for screws. So there's three different operations, and what you can do, and I don't want to go into it right now, but you can set up a template for each one of these operations, and then you can apply that template globally to each sheet. And let me show you that. So we're going to say apply template to all sheets, and I'm going to select the template that I created earlier, and you can find out how to make these templates on the uh, Vectric website. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So again, VCarve is going to scan through each and every sheet, that is in the model, and it's going to make a toolpath for all three cutting operations for every sheet that's in here. So when you're done, you're going to get this list of operations that have happened to each sheet. So sheet one has a uh, drilling, uh, drilling toolpath and a test, which is actually the text path, and the cutouts, which will actually cut out the parts. And they'll go in that order. So the machine will first drill the holes, it'll mill the text, and then it will actually cut out the part. And if you scroll down through this list, you may see some that say failed. So for example, sheet 21 failed on the drilling tool path. And all that means is that there are actually no holes on that tool path to drill. So you should definitely double check them, but don't worry if you see the word failed. 
Now, the amazing thing is, is when you're done, you get a set of three tool paths for each and every sheet that is in here. So we've got one through 41. And you can save all of these tool paths out into individual files. Now this is great for just, uh, if you're milling this yourself, to check off each sheet as you do it throughout each day. Or if you're doing distributed manufacturing, you can take sets of sheets and you can email them, email them out to individual machines or shops and you can keep track of who does what. And the best part of all this is that you can rapidly iterate from a SketchUp design to milling. The, the entire process here, and that includes um, you know, waiting for the thing to nest and scanning all the sheets, maybe takes 10 to 15 minutes from going from your SketchUp model to what we see here, which is completed and ready to cut toolpath. So because of SketchUp and vCarve, we now can very literally print out a house um, without doing a whole lot of manual labor editing all the vectors and files. Uh, so I hope you enjoy.